Hello, and welcome to episode 318 of the official Establish the Run.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan, as always, joined by Evan Silva. Today, we will be talking AFC team by team, important takeaways to look for over the last two weeks of the NFL season. Evan, good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, I just I wanted to say that it's looking like <clears throat> to the subscribers, it's looking like another abbreviated matchups column this week because on Monday, the NFL placed 106 players on the COVID list due to positive tests. And that number more than doubled the previous high. The previous high, the previous single day high was 51 players placed on the COVID list. And so th- there's going to be a lot more placed o- over the course of the week. Um, you know, in an ideal world for the matchups column, like I'm writing four games per day. I'll write four on Monday, four on Tuesday, four on Wednesday, four on Thursday. But with these new rules and the illness situation, I just I can't write up full games on, on Monday and Tuesday. You know, it's it's all it's like defeating the possi- the, the feasibility of constructing the column. But to subscribers, if there's a certain situation that you want me to break down in the matchups column, uh, hit me up uh, with a DM on Discord. And I'd be happy to address it. I'll get to as many of those as I can. But for now, I'm just planning to focus on the critical individual situations and then hammering the up uh, the update log on Friday and Saturday uh, because so many situations just don't crystallize until then. And so many guys are still going on or coming off the COVID list late in the week. So, you know, I, I sincerely like apologize. We're, we're going to have to, I don't know, cause the league has just changed rules on, on the fly. This Omicron is what, like 70 or 80% uh, more catchy than the previous uh, variants. And it's just, it's a freaking horrible situation. Yeah. And I want to say um, a couple things there. First, like Evan didn't even go home to see his family for Christmas so he could work on the update log. I hope you guys aren't just clicking matchups column, click on, the update log also if you are a subscriber. Second, Evan and everyone is helping us behind the scenes getting the projections right. And so you can see a lot of our takes and a lot of Evan's takes and a lot of everybody on the team's takes in the projections that are built in there. So, you know, obviously, like if you're worrying, if you're wondering about a situation, you want to know what we think about how San Francisco running back is going to work out. Just go to San Francisco, sort by running back, and you will see it there. Okay. Oh, before we get into this show, I'd be remiss if I did not mention this show is brought to you by our friends at prizepicks.com. No, a lot of people don't have access to legal ones because they're in a state like I am right now in Florida or New York or California or Texas, wherever else. But you can bet NFL player props in parlay form on prize picks. If you want to give them a try this week, 100% instant deposit bonus up to $100. Use promo code ETR. To get the best deal, again, promo code ETR at prizepicks.com for the instant deposit bonus and the best deal. All right, let's get to it here with the AFC. So th- this was a weird situation. We'll start with the Baltimore Ravens here where I thought Lamar had a chance to get back. He couldn't with the injury. Tyler Huntley uh, surprisingly goes on the COVID list very late in the week. I think it was Saturday that Tyler Huntley officially went on the COVID list. So Josh Johnson starts and Josh Johnson, I mean, dude's been around dudes had big games in various leagues, XFL, you know, jets, all kinds of messes has a pretty good fantasy game. That's not why they lost their pass defense is so, so, so bad. They're giving up so many big plays downfield and T Higgins made some great plays. And we'll get to that with Cincinnati, but still, I mean, God, their defense is so, so, so bad right now, especially in pass defense, especially in deep pass defense. Anyway, what do you see out of the Ravens, Evan? Yeah, they're they're kind of like uh, playing the Ravens is it kind of creates like a shootout environment. Um, so over the last couple of games, like you know that that's something to keep in mind. They got the Rams next. Uh, Josh Johnson, the success of Josh Johnson and Tyler Huntley is now people are trying to spin it, you know, as like an, an anti Lamar thing. But w- what it really is is uh, a testament to the ability of dual threat quarterbacks to have success in the Greg Roman offense. Greg Roman also gets criticism from time to time, but this, this kind of thing goes back to Tyrod Taylor, Colin Kaepernick, you know, he, Greg Roman knows how to put guys who can quarterbacks that can run in position to succeed. 
And so I think that that's also something to, to file away. Mark Andrews is an absolute beast. You, you had him as your run back, right? Correct. My goodness gracious. I mean, what, what an absolute start. Now he's, de- he's dominated with Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley, and Josh Johnson, over 100 yards in three straight games, averaging over 10 targets per game over his last eight. They are feeding him the rock. He's capitalizing. You know, I, someone's, I saw someone say that uh, Mark Andrews is now the best tight end in the league. George Kittle is the best tight end in the league. But Mark Andrews has very much a case for the best receiving tight end in the right. league. Yeah. Yeah. And for fantasy, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Mark Andrews floor is better because George Kittle stays in the block a lot. And I mean, he's so good at it. It kind of hurts him in fantasy times in these games where he gets two or three targets. Let's go to the bills. You know, one of the reasons that uh, I like the bills, we took over on Josh Allen past attempts this week. You know, we have tickets on the bills to win the Super Bowl at 16 to one and and, you know, their ceiling is so high. Like, they can play defense. And when Josh Allen's playing well, I mean, they have a huge – and he's playing well a ton. I mean, they have a huge, huge, huge ceiling on offense. From micro state on this game, Zach Moss comes back. And you were right. I mean, I thought Devin Singletary would absolutely dominate. Zach Moss played 27 snaps in this game. But still, early on, you saw them get Devin Singletary targets. And, and with everybody they had out, you know, no Cole Beasley, no Gabe. It made sense. The guy who went off, though, was Isaiah McKenzie and, like, you know, you didn't get paid on it that much in DFS because Josh Palmer also went off at that really cheap range. But man, Isaiah McKenzie, like they need to get him on the field more. Like he's better than Emmanuel Sanders. There's no doubt about that right now. I know they play different positions, but still, what do you see out of the Bills? Yeah, I, I didn't think that the Bill. I thought the Patriots would play a lot better here. Um, and this is one of the many things that I was wrong about in week 16. I think the Patriots defense fin- finished with negative points. So I will apologize for being wrong. Um, But yeah, the Bills have now pulled even uh, in the AFC East with the Patriots at nine and six. Josh Allen was the best player on the field against him. He looked like an MVP, 314 passing yards, led the Bills in rushing with 64. Isaiah McKenzie, he's a little punt returner, man. I mean, we talked about this a little bit on Sunday morning. Isaiah McKenzie had seven return touchdowns in three years at Georgia. That is, that's incredible return game production. Great with the ball in his hands, 11 for 125 and a touchdown against New England. I think he's going to get another shot too, because Cole Beasley unvaccinated, probably going to miss week 17 against Atlanta, which is a great matchup for Isaiah McKenzie. Some people have worried about AJ Terrell and, uh, Isaiah McKenzie is going to play in the slot, so he's not going to have to deal with A.J. Terrell. But, yeah, Devin Singletary, last three games, 17 touches, average, 88 yards on average. He scored two touchdowns. I mean, he, I guess he's, he's clearly asserted himself as the Bills' lead back. He's not going to be a true every down back, but he has asserted himself as the, the locked-in feature back, and now he's got the Falcons coming up. Go to the Bengals, my Bengals, our Bengals, uh, a Bengals game, a Bengals team I will never forget for my entire life. I mean, you know, I, I thought, and I talked about this on the solo pod, you know, I thought the Joe Burrow stuff was weaker with Josh Johnson. And, you know, because I didn't think they'd let Joe Burrow throw it 35, 40 times in most likely scenarios. Joe Burrow ends up throwing it 46 times, throws for 525 yards and four touchdowns. And like, T Higgins, man, I mean, made some truly alpha plays. Obviously, Jamar Chase is in there. Tyler Boyd made a big play. We already talked about the problems in the Ravens defense. But, you know, when Joe Burrow has these types of volume opportunities, he throws it so far down the field. He's so aggressive, and he has such a good receiving core. He can have huge games. Now, obviously, he'll probably never have another 525-yard, four-touchdown game in his life. But you see the ceiling on Joe Burrow. And for DFS purposes, you know where it's going when it hits, which is so, so, so valuable also. And I mean, Joe Mixon had a huge game too. I mean, they just went completely off here. Yeah. What you see out of our Bengals, I'm actually uh, in the market for maybe some Joe Burrow authentic gear with part of my winnings here, maybe a nice (laughs) Joe Burrow signed jersey or something like that, but go ahead. And what a season he's had coming off the torn ACL, a late season torn ACL uh, by that measure. And, T. Higgins, what an alpha game this was. I mean, what an absolute boss. He was, Jamar Chase had a good game. 
He had a really good game. T. Higgins had an, an incredible game, and he has had an incredible stretch run. You remember there was a long stretch where, like, he was kind of like a meme. You know, he wasn't doing a whole lot. He was getting a lot of opportunity, but, man, he's now capitalizing on that opportunity. The only reason I didn't make a, a large Christmas donation to the, the fine, fine people at DraftKings.core uh, was because I had one team, one team with uh, Burrow and, and Higgins on it, and then you know all the guys I, I I missed on, you know Tyler Johnson and all that. But that 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 saved me uh, from from not making a massive massive donation to the great great people at, at DK. Joe Mixon over his last six games, averaging twenty four touches. They love feeding him. Yeah, there was a time when people were calling T Higgins a Ponzi scheme because like he was yeah. playing cash every week and he just wasn't hitting, wasn't hitting, and now he's just gone completely nuke the last few weeks. Browns, um, you know, you can see the difference for Nick Chubb when Cream Hunt is not there. Like I thought they would play Darius Johnson more, but Nick Chubb has really been way ahead of Darius Johnson, much more ahead of Darius than he would have been with Kareem Hunt. So, you know, and then another bad Baker game. I mean, at this point, there's no way they can see Baker as their quarterback of the future, anything on the Browns. Oh uh, Yeah, that was just a depressing game from Baker. I mean, four INTs, five sacks, but it, it was even more than that. It was like so many inaccurate throws, like not even giving his guys a chance. Um. You know, I was talking to Daigle about this last night. Like, you know, when you when you look at Baker, he is, you know, he's not a great athlete. He really doesn't. He doesn't have a great arm. He's not accurate enough. And he's not poised in the pocket. He's shook in the pocket. So, you know, where, where are the positives at this point? A player like uh, of his caliber needs to be like Drew Brees and needs to be super sharp and needs to be, you know, super accurate. And, you know, but he's just, you know, he, he's regressed. I mean, you remember he had a really promising rookie season. He just has oh, yeah. not gotten better at all. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones dropped a long TD against Green Bay. Continues to remind me very much of like a, such a, a hit or miss player. Uh, continues to remind me of uh, Marcus Valdez-Scantling. Kareem Hunt was activated off the COVID list. So I assume that he'll be back this week. Yeah, I saw some rumblings from coaches that Anthony Schwartz, they want to get him more work over the last two games. And if that's the case, that wouldn't be great for DPJ. And on Baker, yeah, I actually thought that Baker was like going to have a really good NFL career after his rookie year. Like he was really good his rookie year. And maybe some coaching or personnel changes can help, but I don't know. It does not look good at all right now. I know, I know I'm interrupting the video. Wah. But if you're enjoying this video and want to see more fantasy football and DFS content like it, Please just take two seconds, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. Really does go a long way for us and we'd appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And now back to the show. Denver. Drew Locke was like, you know, poised, uh, tried to manage the game to a win, only attempted 22 passes. Um, not what I expected from Drew Locke. Like he, he was obviously coached up to play like that. They still lost the game. Mess for Denver. I mean, they've spent so much on receiving talent. They have to get competent quarterback play in there. Anything on them is now they're not officially out of the playoffs, I don't think, but I think it's almost GG for the Broncos in their playoffs hopes. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> Adam Levitan won a quarter mil. I won $100, but uh, I, I feel like I was right about Drew Locke, that, uh, you know, that, that's how they were going to have him play. The, the, they, they had no running game whatsoever, though, against the Raiders, and that that really surprised me. I thought that – I thought they'd be able to get their running game going, and they they got nothing going. Again, they, they, they were missing their center, Lloyd Cushenberry, but I did not think that that, that would result in, in, in no running game whatsoever. Let's go to the Texans. I norm know we normally gloss over the Texans, but, you know, we talked a lot about Rex Burkhead on Sunday, and I, me and Leone spent a ton of time on Monday talking about the Rex Burkhead play that was in my lineup. I spent a bunch of time on the solo pod talking about Rex, so we don't have to go over it all again. I just want to say that when someone like David Johnson gets scratched late, it makes a huge difference for someone like Rex Burkhead. Now, did I think Rex Burkhead would ever, you know, play really well and look really good and be really efficient? No, but I did think that 20 touches for Rex Burkhead at a really cheap tag against the Chargers team that dares you to run can work. So, you know, it just, 
kind of is what it is. But for more on Rex Burkett, definitely go listen to the solo pod. They didn't have Brandon Cooks in this game. Nico got a touchdown, but was overall somewhat disappointing. Anything else for you on the Texans? Yeah, I made the uh, the Fred Flintstone joke about uh, Rex Burkett on Sunday morning, and so people were filling out my mentions with <laughs> pictures of Fred Flintstone as Rex Burkett was rumbling and stumbling toward 28 DK points and winning Adam a quarter million dollars. So I, I'm I'm I'm, ha- I'm happy for for Adam and for Rex Burkhead. Um, you know, and that, that was one of the, the many things that, that I got wrong this past week. But you're right. You know, I, I, I overvalued the fact that he had been so inefficient. And it just goes back to the fact that, you know, if you can project a running back for a lot of volume, try to almost ignore the identity of the running back in, in large part. But you and, and if you can project him for somewhere around 20 touches, you know that he can do a little bit in the passing game. He can do a little bit in the running game. Uh, he was going up against a bad, uh, uh, r- the worst running rush defense in the league. God, the thing is that, you know, the, the Texans off almost, almost their entire offensive line was on the COVID list. Yeah. So, hey, uh, you know, when, when, I, when you run pure, you're, you run pure, right? Exactly. And, and I just say, you know, you can listen more on the other podcasts about it, but if Rex Burkhead was 15% and on another week, like Rex Burkhead could have been way more popular. There were so many good running back plays. Rex Burkhead was 2%. I would not play Rex Burkhead in this spot ever at like even 10% or 15, but 2% is a whole other story. We should also give Davis Mills a shout out. I mean, yeah, he's, and this was, and he, and, and, you know, he was theoretically at risk because of the, the, the COVID situation on the Texans offensive line, like literally almost their entire offensive line was on the COVID list. And so was Brandon cooks. Yeah. And he averaged 9.4 yards for pass attempt, a couple of touchdowns against the Chargers. I mean, he's shaping up to be like an excellent third-round pick by them. Let's go to the Colts. I don't have a lot to say on the Colts from a personnel perspective. They're just like, we know what they're going to do every week, and they're doing it so well. They're executing. They won six out of their last seven games. Only loss in there was to the Tampa Bay Bucks. They get to finish with the Raiders and the Jaguars. I mean, they're probably going to finish the season having won eight of their last nine games. I mean, just a really impressive run from the Colts, but for fantasy, I mean, we know what to expect at this point. I think it's pretty straightforward. Anything for you on the Colts game? Well, speaking of offensive line situations, here's the the state of the, the Colts offensive line as of Tuesday morning, left tackle, Eric Fisher exited this past game with a knee injury, Quentin Nelson unvaccinated on COVID list, left guard, Quentin Nelson, Center Ryan Kelly, personal, he's been out with a personal matter. I think he's due back this week. He had also been on the COVID list. Right guard Mark Glowinski missed this past game on the COVID list. His backup, Chris Reed, suffered a back injury against Arizona. Right tackle Braden Smith was placed on the COVID list on Monday. And against Arizona, Jonathan Taylor broke an early, uh, a big run, a 43-yard run really early in the game. Other than that, he managed 65 yards, 65 scoreless yards on 26 carries. That's 2.5 yards per carry, zero catches. I thought that that game should have worked against his, you know, MVP case because it shows how valuable the offensive line is. Jonathan Taylor is a great back, okay? But he's not an MVP. He's not because he's not the most valuable player in the league, and he's really not even close. Um He's having a great season. I can see giving him offensive player of the year, but he's not the most valuable player in the league and he should not really even be considered for that award. Michael Pittman gashed the Cardinals. I mean, he didn't, he didn't have a hundred yards, but he had eight catches. I mean, he was picking up first down chain moving gains at will the Cardinal cart spring. The Cardinals went out and signed Bashad Breeland after the game. Bashad Breeland was terrible as a starter in Minnesota. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of moving parts right now in Indianapolis. You know, Jack Doyle injured his leg on the first drive. Mo Ali Cox came in. He played 60 snaps. Mm. Uh, Zach Pascal sat out on the COVID list. T.Y. Hilton had his best, best game. And I, I think we'll, we'll be talking about the Colts later in the week. Yeah, for sure. And again, home against the Raiders this week, certainly a good spot for the Colts, despite all of their issues. Speaking of issues, 
Uh, I thought James Robinson was one of the best plays on the slate and we'll never know what the results were going to be. Cause unfortunately James Robinson blew out his Achilles very early in that game. You know, he was like the last piece that I even like was somewhat excited about with the Jaguars. Now I feel like it's a stone cold ignore the rest of the way they will be playing like Dare. And I think they have Raquel Armstead, although I'm not even sure about that. Anything for you on the Jaguars? Yeah. Dare Ogan Boale had 19 touches against the Jets. Tavon Austin had nine, nine touches against the Jets. Marvin Jones, 13 targets. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence has zero touchdowns in four straight games. Their offense has been broken for a long time. Getting rid of Urban Meyer, as you predicted, has not saved the Jaguars. Um, they placed left guard Andrew Norwell and center Brandon Linder on the COVID list on Monday. Dan Arnold also went. On the yeah. COVID list, it was reported that the Jaguars will be retra- retaining Trent Balk as their general manager. I have no idea why. I mean, there, there's no – and it also limits potential coaching candidates. I mean, Trent Balk is not like a well-liked guy around the NFL. It just seems – you know, and Shad Khan and, and the Khan family, they've been so successful in so many endeavors. It just seems like they they don't get – you know, they, they, they don't get how to run an NFL franchise. I mean, they, you know, we, we've got like a pretty good sample size on that at this point. Let's go to the Chiefs. One of the biggest injuries of the week was Clyde edwards Alaire going down with a collarbone issue. I've seen him listed week to week. They've given Derek Gore a lot. Like they weren't like, oh, CH went down. Let's just play Darrell Williams, the mentor, the whole game. Derek Gore has been playing a ton. How do you think the Chiefs play it going forward at running back, assuming they won't have – CEH, they also played this game without Travis Kelsey, of course. Yeah, I would expect Daryl Williams to be the lead back and uh, Derek Gore to be like the uh, the breather back, you know, the change of pace back would be how I would project it. Um, Tyreek Hill only played 40, 42% of the snaps. You know, I, I had a decent level of confidence in him going into this game. But, you know, the fact that he did not – practice all week and he's still Tyree kill right but you know coaches are they're coaches and yeah. they're gonna give dudes that that are on the practice field all week they're gonna they're gonna play those guys and Tyree kill was um was not on the practice field at all Byron Pringle scored two touchdowns uh he was the he worked as the Chiefs number one receiver uh Noah Gray did fill in for Travis Kelsey, only only saw two targets, played 73% of the snaps, but only saw two targets. Um, yeah, expecting CEH out for week 17. Yeah, and honestly, I think there's a mistake that I've made too many times this year. Guys coming off the COVID list, if they miss practice all week, like performances have been bad. I mean, bad, you yeah. know? And so it's just, you have usage concerns, like will the coaches play them? And maybe they're like a little bit winded. I mean, who knows, you know, so... I should have done a better job this year of not of actively avoiding guys coming off the COVID list for sure. And Tyreek is a good example. Let's go to Vegas. Uh, another slow, bad Hunter Renfro game, only three targets, three catches for 25 yards. I don't know if you think it's defense paying more attention to Renfro or you see anything else there. Good John Jacobs game, 27 carries, 129 yards. Anything on Renfro or anything else with the Raiders? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a tough matchup for uh, Hunter Renfro against Denver. We talked about that. I, I thought he would get a ton of targets. You know, don't don't get me wrong, but um, you know, it, it wasn't the easiest matchup for him. And Josh Jacobs had 28 touches, tied a career high for rushing 129 yards. It was just it was a Josh Jacobs game. Um, Brian Edwards missed the game on the COVID list on Monday. The Raiders defense got just wrecked by. Uh, Placing players on the COVID list. Casey Hayward went on the COVID list. Um, their their defense is in trouble heading to Indianapolis for week 17. Let's go to the Chargers. And I, I don't think we can have a lot of takeaways here because, like, they didn't have anyone. I mean, they didn't have Austin Eckler. They didn't have Jalen Guyton. They didn't have Mike Williams. You know, they were missing a lot of key pieces that created this spot where Justin Jackson could just go absolutely nuts. Josh Palmer have – another good game, but I do expect those guys back. I think for the most part, they are indeed vax. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But yeah, like I said, I mean, Justin Jackson in the Austin Eckler role clearly can do it. Like dude is good. Dude is good in the past game period. Anything on the chargers. 
Well, one guy we know that is not vax is Mike Williams. He's already oh, okay. been ruled out. Yeah, he's already been ruled out for week 17. So I we're going to get okay. another Josh Palmer. Yeah, we're going to get another Josh Palmer. Um, uh, wait, but if yeah. Jalen Guyton's back, I think we can't say for sure that it'll be Josh Palmer every snap, right? Like J- Jalen Guyton could be in there in two wide receiver sets if, if Guyton's back. Okay, yeah, yeah. But in this particular game, yeah, Josh Palmer, yeah. 97% of the snaps, ran 39 routes, five for 43 and a touchdown. We talked going into this game how it was nice for us as fantasy players that the Chargers offense was so condensed because normally that, you know, they got multiple tight ends that can catch touchdowns. They've got, you know, th- three or four legit receivers. Um, but it, it worked against their offense. You know, their offense just wasn't wasn't firing on all cylinders. It's it's hard to comprehend how Keenan Allen in a spot like that only ends up with like four for 35 scoreless. Yeah. Um, Austin Eckler has already been, been activated off the COVID list, so he should be good to go in week 17 versus Denver. The Chargers, man, they fall into the number eight seed in the AFC. Uh, they, they're, they're now in danger of missing the playoffs. That was a game that they could not lose. They lost it. Um you know, they're, they're going to have to win out. Let's go to Miami played in the game last night against the Ian book saints. You know, they clearly want to use a running back by committee. You know, I don't think they like Gaskin too much, but Gaskin got himself 20 snaps. He was kind of the pass down back. They had Duke out there. They gave Philip Lindsay 13 carries just kind of is what it is at this point with the run game. I think it's pretty safe. Ignore Devontae Parker was out there a ton. Didn't do anything in the box score though, which was a bit strange. A lot of two tight end sets for Miami last night. What did you see out of their game? <sighs> yeah. Um, just a lot of manufactured touches for Jalen Waddle. I mean, a ton of quick hitters and shovel passes. Um, they, they kind of identified him as their, you know, their, their number one featured player on offense, which I think he's deserving of. And, um, you know, and that's to his boy. So, uh, expected him to continue to be a high volume player down the stretch. They, they get the Titans next. Titans have given up a ton of points to receivers over the course of the year. Yeah. I mean, big time shower narrative with Jalen Waddell and uh, Tua going back to Alabama. And also, I'd say with the offensive line like being so bad, I mean, these quick hitters is like the best play for them, you know, and it works so yeah. well with the way Jalen Waddell likes to play also. Yeah. Daigle, Connor Allen, and Ryan Noonan have a team in the FFPC main event. They're in twenty oh, eighth place right now. They they had Tua and Waddle uh, going last night. They're in twenty eighth place, so oh, baby. they 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 got a shot to uh, to for at a nice finish. Oh baby, good luck to them. Um, Patriots, you know, um, we had unders across the board on Mac Jones, you know, and 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 it turned out to be right because I think people underestimate how good the Bills defense can be. Damian Harris, though, I mean, he cost me $750,000 because they left him in when they were down by 12 points, which I didn't think they would do. They left Damian Harris in when they were down 12 points in the fourth quarter, and he scored a touchdown, his third touchdown of the game. Cost me seven fifty, dollars no big deal. Shout out to you, Damian Harris. But dude is good, man. I mean, dude dude runs over, guys. I mean, he can really, really play. Obviously, there was no Ramondre in this game. What did you see out of the Patriots? Yeah, it's got a lot wrong about this. I thought the Patriots would show up and play really, really well, bounce back from that loss against Indianapolis. But the Bills are a better team than the Patriots are, and we saw that on Sunday. Um, now the Patriots, coming off back-to-back losses, are going to face the Jags. I mean, I, I was looking at uh, spreads for the week, and I think the, the Patriots are favored by like 15 and a half against Jacksonville. So – not not a whole lot of value to be to be gained there, but uh, I and I, I I also expect Ramondre Stevenson to be back from the COVID list against yeah. Jacksonville. Let's go to the Jets. Michael Carter does get 16 carries, but they give Tevin Coleman 14 as well. There still, I know like Michael Carter is always an intriguing click in DFS. I just don't trust the Jets at all, and I'm trying to like even when guys look good on paper to like not play Jets and Giants. They do get a win over the Jags, but I mean, Zach Wilson still only throws for 102 yards. Just embarrassing. To his credit, though, they didn't have a lot of his quote-unquote weapons in this game. Anything for you on the Jets? Not a whole lot to add there. Uh, Michael Carter did play real, real well uh, in this game. They got the Bucs next. You know, don't expect a repeat. 
going to the Steelers, I mean, absolutely no surprise. They go to Arrowhead and just, you know, flop again. I mean, this team is so bad offensively. Chase Claypool did get six targets, thought he had a fine game. But yeah, I mean, going to Arrowhead is tough with the way the Chiefs defense is playing. And obviously Big Ben's floor is like we're league worst NFL quarterback play on any given week. Anything for you on the Steelers? Yeah, got a tweet recently that there was some narrative out there that Ben Roethlisberger isn't good and that we were like supporting the narrative or something. Ben Roethlisberger is terrible. Like (laughs) there's no narrative here. You know, this is like just a fact, you know, there's a big difference between a fact and like, you know, a a story. Yeah. And you know, uh, he's been under eight yards per pass attempt in 13 of 14 starts this year. Um. I mean, he's just not he's, – he's not adding any value as a quarterback, and he's, you know, he's giving you negative value. Chase Claypool did go back to a full-time player in this one. He was the number two – the clear number two behind Deontay Johnson, but only saw f- six targets, went four for 41. You know, this is, this is a bad team. Last thing we're going to do today is the Tennessee Titans. You know, this was the thesis of the play on A.J. Brown before the season. This is why A.J. Brown was a second-round pick because – he can get 16 targets in a game. Ryan Tannehill throws 29 times. The target competition is so, so, so weak. Julio is pretty much GG. And so, um, you know, you see these spots where A.J. Brown can go for 11, 145, one when he's healthy. Obviously, not many players in the NFL can do that. Titans keep winning, though, man. Um, what do you see out of them as they head towards the playoffs? They are the, the one of the toughest teams to figure out in the NFL. Um, they did just play, and and they might get back Derrick Henry. I mean, they're 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 an interesting team. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I still don't think they're very good, but we'll see. Julio Jones and Nick Westbrook Ikeene both went on the COVID list on Monday. A.J. Brown is going to get another clear pathway to a million targets against Miami. Um, We'll be talking about him on Friday. All right. That is going to do it for this AFC team by team podcast. Appreciate you all being here. We are running a sale right now. If you haven't subscribed yet, $75 for the rest of the season. Just head to the subscribe page to check that out. For Evan, for producer Luke. It is me, Evan called me, now in the ruling class. It is me, the King GPP bro of the ruling class. Good luck, everybody.